How can an octopus help you understand your brain's working memory? Hold on to that thought. Meanwhile, let's play a game. Look at these objects and try to remember as many of them as possible. Now pause this video to say out loud as many as you remember. How many did you get right? In this game, you used your working memory, a part of your brain that you use to temporarily hold on to information. Working memory is used when you do things like multiply numbers in your head, learn new material, or think of what to say next. Ah. <laughs> We like to think of working memory as an octopus that uses its arm to connect your thoughts. It can reach into long-term memory to connect sets of links that you've stored there. Remember how we said that your long-term memory has an almost unlimited storage capacity? Working memory, on the other hand, has a very limited capacity. An average working memory can hold only around four thoughts or concepts. This means you can think of your mental octopus as having only about four arms. But some people have working memories with more arms that can hold many more pieces of information, while other people have memories with maybe only two or three arms that can't hold as much. You cannot change the number of arms of your working memory. That number is pretty much set, kind of like your height is set. If you have fewer arms on your working memory octopus, it can sometimes be a struggle for you to hold a lot of information in mind at once. But if you take the time and effort to learn a subject well, you can way outperform a person who has a larger working memory capacity when it comes to that subject. How? The key is your long-term memory. The more relevant information you already have stored in your long-term memory, the less working memory you need when learning something new or performing a task related to what you know. Those sets of links you already have in long-term memory help you with your thinking. Whether your working memory is big or small, if you give your working memory too much information at once, it will have trouble holding on to anything you can end up feeling quite frustrated. For example, when you start learning how to ride a bicycle, your entire working memory is engaged, so you don't have any free capacity to think about what to have for dinner. But once you've learned to ride a bike, it hardly requires any working memory at all to ride the bike, unless perhaps you run into heavy traffic. Or when learning a difficult physics concept, working memory is working away as you study. But once you've learned that concept well, you can easily use it in your thinking without it occupying much of working memory. That's because most of the job is being done by the sets of links in long-term memory, not by your working memory. The best learning happens when your working memory is hard at work, using all of its arms to support your learning. That's why it's good to challenge yourself. But don't overwork your working memory, giving it more than it can handle. That will only lead to frustration. Let's look at a practical example. Note-taking during live classes. For many learners, this can be a good way to learn more, since it engages more of that working memory. But if the class is very difficult, or your working memory is smaller than average, your working memory will already be working at full capacity just trying to pay attention to the lecture. You need all that working memory to decipher the instructor's explanations. If you're taking notes at the same time that you're listening to the instructor, you may not have enough working memory to understand what the instructor is saying. If you find yourself in this kind of situation, it can be better to borrow someone else's notes, or take notes after class, or take only light keyword-based notes. This way, you can focus more fully on the instructor without having to divide as much of your attention 
to your writing. This is also one reason why online learning can be better than face-to-face. -face. You can take notes without overwhelming your working memory, since you can pause the video to write whenever you want. As research has shown, the key to learning from note-taking is to review the notes using retrieval practice the same day you listen to the lecture. If it's late at night and you're exhausted, at least do a quick skim to try to bring those key ideas back to mind. If possible, do the review right before you go to sleep so your brain is reminded of what is most important to be practicing while you're sleeping without other thoughts getting in the way. When you're trying to learn difficult and demanding new concepts, that's when your working memory can get overwhelmed. To avoid this, here's what you should do. Before you start learning, free your working memory from any non-essential thoughts by writing a task list. Then your I've got to do this thoughts are saved in a safe place so you can return to them after you're studying. Once you're learning, if you feel overwhelmed, try to break the materials into smaller, more manageable chunks. Then master one piece at a time, gradually, until you've mastered them all. This is like how a musician will break a new song into many small segments and master the segments one at a time before gradually putting them together and playing the whole song. Let's say you struggle with understanding what equilibrium is in economics. Start by tackling the fundamental parts of that concept first. Supply, then demand, before putting it all together to understand the concept of equilibrium. Also have something like this pencil and paper to write on as you learn so you can jot down words, numbers, and thoughts as needed. A piece of paper like this can serve as an extension of your working memory, a place to store information outside your working memory. Images and visual representations can also make it easier for a working memory to understand new concepts. You can see here how a visual representation of a water molecule makes it easier easier to understand how the atoms connect. Pictures accompanied by verbal explanations, such as the video you are watching right now, also makes learning easier for working memory. That's because some octopus arms are for visual information and others for auditory information. So you can hold more in mind at once. Incidentally, that's why it can be easier to learn from a video than a book. Videos allow you to see and hear the explanations. But if an explanation is still too difficult to understand, you can always look for better alternatives elsewhere. Let's go back to the memory question we posed at the start of this video. Even with a limited working memory, there is a way to remember all 12 of these items, or even more. But to do that, you need techniques to quickly stick information into long-term memory. We'll look at such memory tricks in video six. Now, head over to the discussion forum and share your best techniques for note-taking while you're trying to understand an instructor in class or in a video. Or check out other people's ideas. I'm Olav Shui. And I'm Barb Oakley. Thank you for learning to learn like a pro.